Hello everyone, my name is Monzi. Welcome to or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm so 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 excited. We're gonna be doing a reading vlog, but this reading vlog feels extra special to me for a few reasons. Number one, I have the whole apartment to myself all weekend. You probably don't know this, but I am the world's biggest introvert. Yes, yes, it's true. I don't know anyone that is more introverted than me. I am someone who needs alone time and not needs it, but craves it every single day. And now I get 48 hours all to myself. So it's truly a gift. And that's not to say that, you know, I don't love living with my partner, but up until we moved into this place together about two years ago, I had spent years living alone, years and I loved it and I miss it and I'm just so excited that I get to have it this weekend and I wanted to bring all of you along with me to just feel my joy. The other thing is that the weather outside is delightful. Clear blue skies, 70 degrees, the leaves are budding, the flowers are blooming, spring has sprung y'all, and I'm just so, so, so happy about it. It has been so regenerative for me to go outside during this time, and I'm hoping it stays this nice for at least like a month or two before it gets absolutely dreadfully hot but it's beautiful this weekend so i definitely am expecting to go outside for either like a run or a walk or just to read outside who knows i don't have anything planned but that's something else that is just making me really excited about this weekend and last but not least for this video i'm going to be reading my most anticipated release of 2024 which to be fair was my only anticipated release of 2024 but i was highly, highly anticipating this read. And that is The Women, well, let's see, The Women by Kristen Hanna. I have just been given access to it through the library and I don't think that I can wait another second to read this book. I love Kristen Hanna. I have read three of her books, The Great Alone, The Nightingale, and The Four Winds. And I've watched Firefly Lane, which is one of her books that they adapted into a TV show. And I watched that whole Netflix series and loved it, adored it. So I'm just super pumped. I can't wait to get into this book. Kristen Hanna likes to write historical fiction primarily. And this book, I believe, takes place during the time of the Vietnam War. And it's about how women were involved in the war. So that's about all I know about the plot. I don't know anything about the characters. I don't know where the story takes place or where it's gonna go. Nothing of that sort, but we'll find out together soon, at least like the premise of the book. So to start off this morning, I'm going to make some coffee of course, uh, make myself a latte. I love making lattes at home. I enjoy my homemade lattes 10 times more than I do when I go and get them at coffee shops. And I figured out that it's because I prefer a milk forward latte. I like to have a lot of milk in my latte, a lot of whole milk specifically. Uh, I'm just a milk girl, which I know absolutely disgusts a lot of people, but it is who I am. So anyway, I'm gonna go make myself a latte, sit on the couch, start this book, have myself a morning, and as for the rest of the day, I don't really know what else I'm gonna be doing. We're just gonna play it by ear, but I'll be taking you along with me. So I hope you enjoy, and I will check in with you later.
So I have just finished the first two chapters of the book while I drink my coffee and I'm going to go on a walk. So I'm putting on some sunscreen and some chapstick and I'm gonna listen to some of the book while I walk. Audible had a deal going on where you could purchase a book a month for 99 cents each month for a total of three months. And I went ahead and bought into that. So I bought The Women on Audible for 99 cents, which is a steal if you ask me. I'm just gonna tell you a little bit more about this book and what I've learned in the first two chapters. So essentially we are following Frankie McGrath, who is the daughter in this really wealthy family in California. In Frankie's family, the men have been celebrated for serving their countries in different wars, in various capacities, and the book actually opens up with the family throwing a party to send off her brother to the Vietnam War. And we see in the first chapter as Frankie starts to question why she as a woman cannot be considered a hero and why she cannot also be sent off to the war. And then in chapter two, she officially becomes a nurse, a registered nurse, and enlists in the war. So she is going to be going to Vietnam. But the catch is that she has not told anyone that that's what her plan is, so no one has any idea. So I think we're about to find out what her family's reaction to this bold move is and if they're going to respect it or if they're going to try to get her to stay home. I don't really have any opinions on the book so far. I've only read a couple of chapters, but I do think that I'm going to enjoy the premise. I'm really curious to see what her experience in Vietnam is like and what heartbreaking things we're going to see happen over there because Kristen Hanna really knows how to put a dagger through your heart. So I'm prepared. Okay, let's go for a walk. up taking a two hour nap which is pretty standard for me if I'm being honest on the weekends I just always pass out around one o'clock and I'm a huge sleeper I could sleep for an endless period of time it's kind of part of my personality what are you gonna do anyway I then read some more and went to the gym and lifted and kind of lazed about watched some YouTube videos. I love watching YouTube videos. Obviously, that's how I got started making YouTube videos. And then I had some dinner and now I'm putting on a face mask. This is just clay and apple cider vinegar, but I've been breaking out and I want to do something about it. So I thought a face mask and a bath would be perfect. I'm now like 25% of the way through the book. So I'm on page 119, chapter 11. And I do have some initial thoughts that I wanted to share with you all. So just generally speaking, I would say that this book hasn't grabbed me from the jump the way that her other books have. I don't feel particularly attached to any of the characters. And there have been a couple of sad things that have happened and they didn't pack the emotional punch that I feel like her books normally do for me. And I was thinking about this because obviously that's a little disappointing for me, but I'm also hopeful because I still have 75% of the book left. A theory of mine is that, you know, once you're kind of accustomed to an author's writing style, it doesn't always have that same effect 
on you with subsequent books, I think, because there's not as much novelty anymore. And I'm kind of wondering if that's what's happening. Like if this had been my first Kristen Hanna book, would I have already been devastated a couple of times? Or would I have felt the way that I did reading it today? Who knows? Who can say? But I'm still into the story. I'm still intrigued. I still want to know what's going to happen. And I generally just like her writing style. So I'm still, I'm still in it. I would just say that it doesn't quite hit me the way that the other three books that I've read have. And I don't want to give too much of the plot away, so I'm not going to say too much on that front. But we're in Vietnam now, and Frankie McGrath is sort of being faced with the realities of war. That's all I'll say. But we are in Vietnam. We're seeing the war up close and seeing its aftermath and seeing what it was like for American soldiers to be there. So it is really interesting. I just am not having as many strong feelings about this story as I have had in the past. That's all I'm gonna say for now. I'm gonna get in the bath and read some more. I don't know if I'll update again tonight or if I'll just update in the morning. We'll have to see how I'm feeling, but I will check in with you all later. Good morning everyone. It is around noon on Sunday. I've been up for a couple of hours reading this book. I'm on chapter 20, page 242. I hate to say it, but my initial thoughts and feelings haven't changed that much since when I last spoke to you. I'm just finding this to be a little disappointing and maybe I had set too high of expectations because I love Kristen Hanna so much, but there are just several things in this book that haven't been working for me. So let me just tell you where I am in the book. Basically, Frankie McGrath has returned from her time in Vietnam and she is coming back to America, coming back to California, becoming reacquainted with her family, and we are getting to see how the American public is receiving her upon her return from the war and the distaste that they have towards her for her involvement in the war and also how her family is responding to her. They kind of, well, I won't say how they respond, but we're getting to see a lot of negative responses to her return from Vietnam, how she is viewed as being a woman returning from Vietnam and that sort of thing. And I think moving forward, we're just gonna be seeing how she handles being back, how she handles being a veteran and how she deals with all the things that veterans have to go through when they return from war. So let me just talk about some of the things that aren't doing it for me. Number one, the book is titled The Women, Women Plural, and for the first half of the book we have only gotten one person's perspective and it's Frankie McGrath and I'm pretty sure that we're just gonna get her perspective moving forward I don't know for sure but I think I would have preferred to have switched viewpoints throughout the story and gotten the perspectives of multiple women rather than just Frankie because I don't really connect with Frankie. There's just nothing that draws me to her. I don't find her to be particularly special in any way. I'm getting the impression that she must be very beautiful because there are so many men who have just fallen head over heels with her pretty instantaneously in this book. And that brings me to my next sort of qualm with this book is the romance. I'm just not a huge fan of the romance in this book. It seems very surface level and very quick, which may be the reality of how it happens when these soldiers are at war. You bond really quickly, you trauma bond really quickly, and you fall in love very quickly, but it's just not very fleshed out, these relationships that we're witnessing, and I'm finding it hard to care about them or to 
be invested in the relationships at all. And I kind of wish that they weren't part of the story because I'm just not that interested in that part of this book. I just want to hear about Frankie's experience as a nurse at war and her experience returning home. I don't want to hear about her falling in love necessarily. And in my mind, it just sort of detracts from the whole point of this book for her to be falling in love with multiple men and for the focus to be on those romantic relationships at all. So overall, I'm having a good time. I'm having a decent time. It's kind of reading like a three star for me right now. It's just not what I was expecting. And so there is disappointment there because I typically love Kristen Hanna's books. Like, love them um, and so for me to feel kind of meh about this newest one it's upsetting <laughs> i'm not i'm not thrilled about it but i still have 200 pages plus so you never know which is the same thing that i said last time and my feelings haven't changed but you do never know so i'm just gonna keep on keeping on and uh give you an update when I have one. I don't know when that will be. But aside from the book, I am in the process right now of making chana masala, which is like an Indian chickpea curry with like a cucumber tomato side salad um, that I can eat today and have for the rest of my week for lunches. I'll show you some of that because I'm going to be making it while I listen to the book. This recipe is so good. It's a staple in our house. I make it all the time and it's so easy, so delicious, great to make when you have company, so thought I would share. Other than that, I think maybe I'll go for a run later on today, um, but pretty much for most of the day, I'm just planning on reading. So I do think that I will finish this book today because I just can listen to it when I'm doing other tasks or read the physical copy when I feel like doing that. That's my day and I'm gonna bring you along. just finished dinner and I also just got done with the women so want to give you my overall review final thoughts before ending the video I'm gonna start with the positives because there are positives first and foremost I applaud and appreciate Kristen Hanna's intent with this book. I understood what she was trying to do. The whole purpose that she had in writing this was to highlight and to bring awareness to the stories of the women who served in the Vietnam War because historically it appears that these stories have almost been like erased and overlooked, dismissed, denied. No one talks about these stories. No one views these women's stories as heroic. Kristen Hanna is drawing attention to that fact through this novel. And I really liked that. I really enjoyed the second half of the book when Frankie McGrath is back stateside and you get to see the way that she is mistreated by everyone, by the public, by healthcare professionals who refuse to believe her involvement in the war and repeatedly tell her that there weren't any women in the Vietnam War. That was totally infuriating to read about and I had no idea that that was even a thing. Also in the second half of the book, I feel like we get more context about the war, not necessarily why we were even in Vietnam, which I wish we had gotten more of just because I don't have a good understanding of the war. Like I didn't go into this book with that knowledge. So I wish that that would have been touched on more, but we do get a better sense of why Americans were protesting the war, why they were upset that we were even in Vietnam and hence why they were shaming the soldiers and the returning veterans. Not to excuse their behavior, 
for treating veterans poorly, but just to understand why that was even something that was happening. We finally got that in the second half of the book. Generally speaking, I much preferred the second half of the book to the first half of the book. I thought that it was just more developed. I felt like we got really great insight in what it means to deal with PTSD and just how veterans are affected in a multitude of ways upon returning to normalcy, to the life that they once lived and how difficult that transition really, really is. And then the last thing I'll say about what I enjoyed with this book, I really liked the friendships. And I feel like I say this in a lot of my book reviews, I love reading about friendships. So if that is ever included in a book, then it's gonna be a positive for me. I just love camaraderie. I love seeing these women who served together, maintaining their friendships, for a lifetime and yeah, I just really liked it. Okay, on to the negatives. Okay, so we're in Vietnam with Frankie McGrath and she's an army nurse and we're kind of just faced with tragedy after tragedy after tragedy, which I'm sure is the reality of what it's like to serve as a nurse during wartime. But as a reader, when you're just moving from one horrific event to the next to the next, it loses impact. And that's how this felt for me. It was just constant trauma, 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 and no room to breathe between or no room to really sit in the weight of the event that we just observed or read about. So I just wasn't as moved as I feel like I normally am with Kristen Hanna's writing. I feel like we read multiple times about different men coming into the hospital with lost limbs and I wish that we had just read about it once and there had been like a slow build up to it where we really felt something for the characters involved and then we got to sit with it afterwards for a period of time rather than just reading about it and then boom, moving on to the next tragedy. And I don't mean to take away from what it's actually like to be there in person as medical personnel in this type of setting, but again, for me to really feel it, I just needed it to happen a couple of times and I needed it to be really, really explored thoroughly rather than just reading about it page after page after page after after page with a different incident occurring on each page. I hope that makes sense. I already mentioned it, but I didn't love any of the romance subplots and there are multiple. They were just too quick. Again, they're too quick. You don't get to really feel the connection develop. It's just like, I find you attractive. Let's get together. We're in this really serious situation together and only we can understand what we're going through. So we might as well be together. That's kind of what it felt like. And I just feel like it didn't need to be included in the story at all. This book just didn't move me in the way that other Kristen Hanna books have. And that's probably why it was such a letdown for me. I was just expecting this and I got this. It is what it is. On Goodreads, there have been over 200,000 ratings, and this book currently has an average rating of a 4.69, which is insane. That's an off the charts type of rating. So I might be an outlier here. I don't want to dissuade you from reading this book. I think that if you are at all interested, then you should go ahead give it a shot because most people tend to disagree with me. Most people have rated it five stars, but I think for me, it's probably going to end up being a solid three stars. I thought it was perfectly fine. I just wanted more out of it and I expected more from my girl, Kristen Hanna, that I didn't get. Will I read another book of hers? Absolutely. Absolutely. I will because she has just stunned me so many times and this was like the first real disappointment. So the next Kristen Hanna book that comes out, I will be equally as excited to read it. I might just have my expectations set a little bit more realistically for the next one. And that's all that I really have to say for now. I will be including this in my April wrap up whenever that comes out. So I might have some more like refined thoughts at that point. But for now, this is just how I'm feeling after having read it, you know, less than 20 minutes ago. Oh, and I do want to mention one more thing, but moving forward, this is going to be a spoiler zone. Spoilers. So you haven't read the book and you don't want spoilers. Do not move forward in the video and thank you for being here. Okay. Spoilers ahead. Spoilers ahead. Spoilers ahead. All I want to say spoiler wise is 
the two resurrections that we witnessed with Rye and with Jamie, I saw coming. I absolutely saw coming. And I think that's also what kind of disappointed me is I feel like I've been like shocked or kind of been like floored or, you know, surprised with other Kristen Hanna books. But with these two plot twists, so to speak, I saw them coming from a mile away. I saw them coming from 10 miles away. She did not do a good job of hiding the fact that they were both gonna come back. With Jamie, we never see him actually die. She just sees someone giving him chest compressions as he's being airlifted away, and then sees the person giving him chest compressions like shake his head and stop. But she didn't see him actually die. And I've learned with authors, if you don't actually see the person, if they are not declared dead, then you best expect that they're gonna come back later on in the book. You absolutely best expect it. So I was, I was expecting it. With Rai, I didn't know at first whether he was actually gonna come back. They also never showed him dying. They just reported him being dead. But then there started being some foreshadowing with like the discussion of prisoners at war and how they were often mislabeled as being dead, even though they were just missing in action. So, once they started having those discussions, I was like, huh, I'm pretty sure that Rai is gonna end up being a prisoner of war. Lo and behold, he was. Anyway, I think if I hadn't seen those two resurrections coming into play later on in the book, I would have been more surprised and I might have enjoyed the plot a little bit more. But because I fully predicted them, it was kind of like, wah, wah, wah. So yeah, just wanted to put that out there that called it called it. That's it for now. If you read the book and you have any thoughts, I'd love to hear them. Whether they're the same as mine or different, I think I'll be going now. Thanks for watching. Bye!